Martinez fans, joined as always by King Jemison. And if you're paying attention to Stanford sports this week, you know, you're coming off the high of a women's basketball national championship. Incredible, breaking that whole streak. And then you remember, wait, this athletic department wins national championships all the time. We had another one of those patented Stanford two natties in a day just this past weekend, men's gymnastics and synchro. And as soon as you start looking at that, you look at what is most assuredly the best athletic department in the nation. I don't think anyone's disputing that. But there are a lot of people who are more than upset that Stanford is dropping from 36 sports. It's supporting down to 25. And the people most upset with that is a 36 sports strong group. And so this past week, there's been a lot of information on that front. Uh, that group had a meeting with MTL, the Stanford University president, at his request. They talked last week. Uh, per, per, Provost Drell was there as well. Uh, Bernard Muir, the athletic director, was there. And they had members of their group, the 36 Sports Strong group. But after all of that, King, the question I want to ask you is, is there any chance that this meeting with MTL actually does anything to save these sports? There has to be, right? Because they never would have publicly announced such a meeting if they weren't at least considering bringing these sports back. Let's be honest, Stanford and Mark Tessier Levine in particular need a PR win right now. It has not been a great year for the university. It has not been a great year for its president. This would be a chance for him to get to, to get some positive publicity. To be honest, as, as both of us have questioned this decision throughout, have strongly criticized this decision throughout, I'm not going to give him too much praise for reversing it if that's what he ultimately ends up doing. But nevertheless, it would at least be some good good press in his name. Is that MTL, you know, he was part of making this decision to cut the sports, but he was also part of the decision to bring them back in this heroic gesture. And so I don't know why you would publicly announce that you're from these sports if you are not strongly considering bringing them back because now you're setting yourself up, up for an even bigger PR nightmare if you go ahead and cut them anyway. After you've said that you're going to bring them back, or, or not that, you, excuse me, after you've said that you're meeting with representatives of these sports who want to bring them back, if you then say, yeah, you know, nothing came out of those meetings, we're still cutting you, that's going to be another shot to the heart for representatives of those sports and really for the Stanford athletic community as a whole. And it's also going to reflect really poorly on MTL and his leadership. I know the decision is not entirely up to him. I know that it's going back to the board for review. We're not going to get a decision particularly soon. But I think there's been a lot of noise. If you've seen Stanford athletes recently, a lot of them are wearing 36 sports strong. You have athletes who are covering up the Stanford on their jersey um, because they're not going to stand for an institution that cuts a sport that they're either participating in or that their friends are participating in. There's been a lot of, of um, backlash against this decision, I think more than the university expected. To be honest, when I think about it, I think that the university made this decision thinking that people were just going to, they were just going to go along with it and say, oh, you know what, one of these sports was involved in the Varsity Blues scandal. Um, so, you know, we want to get rid of sailing and you know what, none of these sports are that big anyway. It's, gonna, it's not going to be a big deal. We're going to do it in the middle of the pandemic. Nobody will even notice. I think it, it that was uh, a strongly misguided, severely misguided idea because guess what? People at Stanford care about all sports and there are such strong alumni community in every one of these sports and they were going to fight this like hell and they were going to point out the hypocrisy that they've already nearly raised enough money to support these sports. It's not about the money, folks. It is about a decision to take away a large piece of the athletic community to shift Stanford's focus away from sports and also to try to make up for the Varsity Blues scandal, which, by the way, had nothing to do with the athletes on these teams who are going to be suffering from this decision. So good on 36 Sports Strong for pointing out the hypocrisy and for moving the needle. If MTL reverses the decision, I'm not going to be happy with them, but at least I won't be as mad. And I think that they have to be thinking about it if they had this meeting in the first place. Stanford should be embarrassed that there are athletes winning national championships and don't even want to represent Stanford. We're talking about Stanford here, King, and they don't want to represent their school because Stanford has turned their back on them. And if you talk to anyone involved with 36 Sports Strong, they've told you all along, this makes no sense. 
there's no logical explanation why, once again, in college, we're punishing the students, the athletes, for something that has nothing to do with them in any way. Stanford should absolutely be supporting these programs as they have done, as they promised to do. And the fact that they went back on it in the first place is horrible. The fact that they went back on that promise and in a Zoom meeting cut all of these sports is truly embarrassing. And now that embarrassment is only seen over and over again when you have press releases with the 36 Sports Strong logo all over them because the athletes are still wearing that t-shirt. And that goes back to what you were saying is that Stanford never expected any backlash. They thought that this was going to be a one-time thing in the summer. It gets hidden in all the rest of the pandemic news. It's gone. Everyone accepts it. But of course, that's not the way that Stanford works. And good on Stanford. As you were saying, everyone involved with this effort fully expects that MTL reverses the decision. Jeremy Jacobs, who is a men's volleyball player, graduated in 2006, came out and basically says, like, it would be shocking if the decision was left in place. And I think they're in the right here, as you were saying, to be confident that the decision will be overturned. Because, frankly, as we've been going over, it doesn't make any sense. There's all of this evidence in support of supporting these student athletes. There are so many reasons to keep these sports, not in the least of which is that the two reasons that Stanford gave financial excellence, financials and competitive excellence are just not the case at all. Stanford is winning national championships in these exact same sports and the financials as a 36 sports strong group has mentioned are not what they seem to be. Stanford supposedly said these programs cost would cost $200 million to endow. That number is clearly wrong based on the fact that a lot of these sports are already self-endowed. I think squash, for one, already has a significant endowment. I know wrestling has another. And then on top of that, Stanford didn't even reach out to donors. So clearly there was something a little bit fishy, but that fishy thing was on Stanford's side where they're not giving real reasons for cutting these teams and here we are almost a full year later, and there are plenty of people willing to write the ship. They're willing to meet with MTL and the other members in that community in that uh, meeting, which included the board of trustees subcommittee. And so they're going back to the full board. As you said, I think we can fully expect them to reverse this decision, which frankly should never have been made in the first place. Absolutely. It never should have been made. And that is what I 